Hi again. Take three. This is live. You guys, I don't know what's going on. 2022 is screwing with my video, but welcome to Bariatrics and Tips. My name is Michelle Giesen, and I am your hostess with the mostess. Um, welcome. Happy New Year. Welcome to our 2022 live Facebook cooking session. I am so excited to bring you the long-awaited spaghetti squash pizza cups. In a minute, I'm gonna bring you around and get you into the heat of the moment here. I've got a lot of stuff to show you and a couple recipes to follow too, not even withstanding the spaghetti squash pizza cups. So welcome, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, let me first start by saying, this is a long time in the making. We've had a couple weeks off. I hope everyone had a great um, vacation, holiday time, time off, whatever you want to call it, time with your family and friends. Um, hopefully it was filled with yummy food and good choices and all of that good stuff. This recipe that I'm going to show you today is a <clears throat> tried and true, really good for you, soul food for me type comfort food. So I love anything pizza. Pizza is my kryptonite. And sometimes I have to think about what it is that I love about the pizza. Is it the bread? Is it the sauce? Is it the cheese? And the answer is pretty much yes, please. But I have decided and I have discovered that I can live without the bread as long as I have that decadent, indulging, deep dish pizza flavor. And I feel that I've achieved this with this recipe. So you are in for a huge treat. Um, there's been a lot of posts on our Facebook page, Bariatrics and Tips, all week about spaghetti squash. It is a very versatile, versatile tool in our bariatric arsenal. So we are going to get to that really soon. For those of you that are new, welcome. One thing that we have in common is that we have all had bariatric surgery or we're gearing up to have bariatric surgery. And even if that doesn't quite fit the bill, even if you're striving for overall health and wellness, if you're trying to combat dia diabetes, um, you're, still in the you're still in the right place, okay? Food is a huge part of our lives, and it's here whether we like it or not. We have to learn how to coexist with it. We have to learn how to make it fun and interesting and indulging without having all those unnecessarily ca unnecessary calories and carbs and fat grams and things like that. Um, the one thing that I've learned through my almost seven year bariatric journey is that I do not like to lose control and I do not like to be deprived, okay? Because when the control freak loses control and when you feel like you are being deprived, you are setting yourself self up for a colossal failure. So this is my challenge for you for the 2022 year. Remove the word deprived from your vocabulary because there is no reason you should have to walk the face of this earth wondering whether or not you could or should have this or that, okay? We can have fun with food. We can experiment. The, the kitchen and the grocery store are amazing pit stops on our journey to self-discovery and wellness, okay? You are in good company when you are in the produce section or traveling the perimeter of your grocery store or even in your mecca of this wonderful kitchen, you should feel comfortable and empowered and inspired because here is where the magic is gonna happen, okay? For those of you who don't know, I am almost on my seventh year as my rebirth day. I've had gastric bypass surgery. I've lost and maintained 130 pounds gone forever. I've worked really hard and the journey has not been all a bed of roses. It's had its trying times and I've made my share of mistakes because I'm only human. But what I have learned and what I have gained is insight. I know how to spot bad behaviors. Thanks, Melissa. And I know how to be able to find logical and healthy substitutions for the things that I love. I also know that I don't like to be told what to do. I like to make the decisions. And when I decide what I'm gonna put in my body, I am more empowered on so many different levels, okay? This is all worth the time and the effort. And so are you, and so am I, okay? So there's a lot of great and exciting things in store for bariatrics and tips for this 2022 
Facebook Live recipe demonstration season, okay? There's a lot to go over and I am so open to taking suggestions and knowing what you want to be able to eat and what you want to make over. So please let the suggestions fly, okay? But remember, if you need specific medical guidance or you have questions um, about your own bariatric journey, the best people to loop in are your medical and dietitian team. So please make sure that your surgeon and dietitians are looped in when you have specific medical questions. If you have any questions about any of the tricks and tips, any of the accessories, gadgets, or ingredients that I'm using, feel free to post those on our Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page because chances are if you're asking it, someone else is too. And I am an open book, so I am happy to oblige, okay? So let's cut to the chase. Let's talk about our spaghetti squash pizza cups. Who doesn't love pizza? Said no one ever, <laughs> okay? No one. Um, I don't have the printed recipe, so you're gonna see me glancing at my laptop because I have it right up there. Um, but one of the things that you wanna make sure that you do is you wanna have everything in place and there is some preparatory work that you'll need to do for your spaghetti squash, mainly making the spaghetti squash. And there are lots of ways to, um, to prepare the spaghetti squash. There are lots of ways to cook it. You can opt for the stove. You can opt for the microwave. I've seen some people pan fry them, although that seems like it would take a very long time. Um, but I'm gonna show you what works best for me. And you can certainly, on our Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page, you can search by keyword. So up at the top where the spyglass is, you can type in a word or words, like spaghetti squash, and you will see every post that corresponds to those keywords. So that way you can look back as far as you need to to find exactly what you're looking for. So I think I'm gonna bring you around and show you because the first thing that we need to do is prepare our spaghetti squash. And I have it just about prepared. Um, so I wanna show you all the good stuff about that. So come on over, okay? I'm gonna come get ya. And let's see what we got here. You're gonna see close up of me, hello. Hold on one sec. All right, I just need to get all these duckies in a row. Here I am again, hello. All right, you are taking the tour. <coughs> Pardon me, got a frog in my throat, if you know what I mean. All right, so here I am. Here is where I shall be. Let me find my center. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we need to deal with is our spaghetti squash. And um, I have one that's already cooked. You can opt for a medium one or um, a smaller one. It really depends on how much you want to make. These, the spaghetti squash is hearty, so first of all, if you buy it on a Sunday and don't cook it till midweek, you're gonna be completely just fine. You just wanna make sure that you store it in a cool, dry place. Um, you wanna make sure that if it has a little stem on it, that it's dry. Um, lots of good tricks and tips on our page to finding the ideal spaghetti squash, and I won't bore, bore you to tears here with that. Um, but let's go over to the stove, okay? I'm gonna show you. Um, what I like to do is, the way that I like to prepare my spaghetti squash is I like to um, warm it up in the microwave for about four and a half to five minutes. That is going to soften it up so that I don't have to worry about slicing my hand off when I'm trying to cut it, okay? Trust me, it works. You're not cooking it. I kind of, I kind of figure it as like a, a thawing type thing or a defrost, but don't put it on the defrost section. I just put it in the microwave for four to five minutes and then I cut the sides off, so that way I'm dealing with a, you know, the center of the squash. I cut it once down um, sideways, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them into circles. I hope that you saw one of my tricks and tips this week about cutting them into circles actually adds, um, makes for longer strands. Um, and I actually prefer it. I think it's easier to cook. I think it's easier to prepare. But again, it's what I, it's what I like for me. But let me show you what I mean, okay? So take a look. So I have my spaghetti squash cut into discs, okay? And I actually had four of them. So what I was saying is I had the spaghetti squash, I cut the ends off, and then I cut it once down the middle, and then I, each, I cut each section again in two. So that way I had these little discs, okay? 
Then I'm going to salt and pepper both sides of them. And then I'm going to put the seed side up. And then I'm going to put them on the cookie sheet. I am going to spray with cooking spray just slightly the cooking sheet just so it doesn't stick. And I am going to bake these for 40 to 45 minutes at 400 degrees. Okay, the, it's, I keep the seeds in, as you can see here, because once it's cooked, it's way easier to remove those seeds. And you can see I kind of removed, I, I had four of these total, and I've done three of them already, and then I'm going to show you how I do the other one. Okay, so here is my spaghetti squash that I need to seed. And this is what I have already. Th these are the um, three little discs that I already did. But you can see it's very easy with a fork just to scrape the yucky stuff off. And you do want to let this wait maybe 10 minutes before you attempt this so you don't, you know, burn your, burn your fingers off. But you can see that was very, very easy to remove. All right. And then, if it's still too hot, you can take like um, some tongs if you want, or you know, if you can tough it out, you can definitely do it. But now all you do is scrape. Whoops, sorry. You just scrape around, around and around she goes. Where she stops, we're all gonna know. And now you've got this little disc and I'll dump it in here so you can see, and then I'll transfer it to, um, and you can do it from this side too, and really maximize that scraping potential. But you'll be able to see longer strands. And then you've got this hollowed out circle that you can um, dispose of. I actually take all of mine and I put it in a, like a plastic grocery bag. But look at that, look at these strands, look at how amazing those are. Okay, so now I am going to transfer these strands to our bowl. Make sure we get every little bit. I do have to tell you my dog is right here on the floor waiting for me to drop something. And yes, believe it or not, <coughs> pardon me, believe it or not, he loves spaghetti squash. All right, so look at my beautiful spaghetti squash for just a moment while I just run some water under my hands to rinse. And then I'll bring you back up here. Hold on. Here I am, hello. Hi, Marsha, how are you today? Thank you all for joining in. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, Melissa, you, you think yum now? You haven't seen yum yet. You're gonna see yum in just a minute. All right, so let's see. Hello. All right. So back to la spaghetti squash. All right, there, can you see okay? Remember, I am not a camera person. I do not play one on or off TV. <laughs> I'm doing all this on my own. <laughs> but what I like to do and what you might be able to see here is I just like, this is just a nice trick or tip. I have my bag with all my waste stuff and that way I can just um, knot it up at the end and then discard it and throw it away. All right, so now what we have is we have our spaghetti squash. It looks fantastic. It's been, oh, there's a little seed. You know, you might find seeds and it's no big deal if you see one, you just pick it out. Um, but this looks pretty good. I like to have my spaghetti squash with a little bit of crunch to it. Um, it's very satisfying is what my daughter would say. So, um, there we have it. So now what we need to do is we're gonna season this a little bit further and we're gonna add a quarter cup of grated Parmesan, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a beaten egg. That egg is going to help set everything up when we get everything into our muffin pan, okay? So I will go ahead and what I like to do here is with my egg that I've already beaten, this is where I'm gonna put the teaspoon of garlic in and I'm just gonna quickly give it a stir and that way I know that it's it's all incorporated and it's not clumpy and all that good stuff okay so I am gonna pour whoops 
I am gonna pour this in, the egg, and now we've got the Parmesan cheese. So bear with me here, let me get it right here. I've got it all out. And now I need to find, I put, I need a spoon, of course. Easier said than done. All right, so now let's mix it all up. You wanna get that egg really incorporated and the same with the Parmesan cheese. Really mix it up nice. Sometimes I wonder if I should be on the other side of the camera because I'm a lefty, but I think you guys can see. Can you see okay? That egg is gonna do a good job of setting it up. And if you find, the recipe only calls for one egg, but if your spaghetti squash is pretty large, you might wanna decide whether or not you wanna add a second um, egg. This one, oh, I found another seed. I think it's looking okay. Um, the one that I made earlier today, the pictures that I showed you with the teaser alert, maybe an hour or so ago, um, was a little bit less of the spaghetti squash, but this actually looks really, really good. You don't want it to be an omelet. You just want that egg to give it, you know, a, a method in which to set. Okay, so there we go. So we've got our squash mixture. Again, this is just Parmesan cheese, garlic powder, and a beaten egg. And the thing that we need to do first is we need to get this into um, the muffin tin, and we're gonna make 12 out of this bad boy. So however you wanna do it equally to achieve that 12, um, whatever method works best for you, okay? Um, so I wanna show you a little bit about what we're gonna do first. We've got the muffin tin. I use parchment paper muffin wrappers, and you can get them at any grocery store. You can also buy them online. These are parchment paper muffin wrappers. Um, this has 60 in the box, and I think it was, it was less than $3, maybe two and a half dollars, okay? Um, so a decent, uh, not too expensive. And now you just wanna use your tongs, and you can kind of make sure everything's mixed together and you want to put them in the muffin tin. And I'm just gonna put a little at a time until I get all of them in there. And you wanna make sure that they're uniform. I mean, you could get pretty neurotic if you want and you could weigh them and measure them. But you know what, as long as you're doing them, you know, pretty equally, you're gonna be just fine. You don't wanna fill them up too high because what we're gonna do, whoops, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press down on this little mixture and kind of form it to the sides of the muffin cup. So that way there's like a hollowed out area for us to put our pizza sauce and our toppings and that's what's gonna be super yum, okay? All right, so there's, there's 12. I'm gonna put a little bit. This was um, quite a bit larger of a squash than what I used earlier in how I formulated this recipe. So the fact that I'm seeing a lot left over in my bowl isn't very surprising to me, okay? So now what you need to do, and I'm gonna bring you in. Hold on, we're experiencing technical difficulties. I'll be right there. I'm just trying to get you the best view possible <laughs> with my, okay, there, can you see that okay? All right, so you can use a fork, you can use clean hands, and all you're gonna do is make these sides, um, build your sides until you've got like a little cup at the bottom, okay? This is really the, ex this is really the hardest part because once you have this part done, you're gonna be Hollywood this is just the grunt of it right here. And um, I'll put these in the oven, but then I'll kind of show you what else I wanna do too. Um, we're probably not gonna have enough time for you to see it come out of the oven. I already have some finished ones that I can show you. But you can see, can you see how I mushed that down to form a cup? And that egg and Parmesan mixture is gonna help solidify that cup. And you are gonna bake these for about 20 to 22 minutes at 400 degrees. Um, and then when they come out, 
we will let them just sit for a little bit and then we'll start filling our muffin cups, okay? So I'm gonna go pop these in the oven and then we'll have a talk about what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna set the timer here for 15 minutes. All right, hello again. It's me, it's me. All right, so at any rate, um, that's gonna that's gonna bake for 15 minutes and when they come out, you're gonna add your pizza sauce. Now this is where we're gonna fortify our pizza sauce with Gene Pro. So for those of you that use Gene Pro, good for you. I think it's a very good product. Um, I, I use it quite often. It, for me, it's kind of like a no-brainer when I want a low-cal protein boost. So I've got my Gene Pro and I'm actually gonna take three scoops of this Gene Pro and I'm gonna put them in my spaghetti or my pizza sauce, okay? I already put two in, so I'm saving one for you, okay? So I got my Gene Pro in and pizza sauce, I used a half a can, a half of a 15 ounce can of pizza sauce. Your favorite pizza sauce, this just happens to be my favorite. It's the Meyer brand and it's super cheap. Um, I just love it. For some reason, I just love it. But what we're trying to do here is we're trying to build like a really thick, decadent, flavorful pizza sauce. So not only am I going to fortify it with the Gene Pro, I'm actually going to add in my other quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Okay? And you know what's really funny is I've been trying for so long to think of like what Gene Pro reminded me of and it's got the consistency of that grated Parmesan. So when I whisk this together, um, I'm gonna get the taste of the Parmesan and I'm gonna get some more thickness from the Gene Pro, but you are not gonna taste that added protein at all. Gene Pro's, well, this Gene Pro is unflavored, okay? So now I'm gonna mix my pizza sauce and you can see it gets it, it, gets it nice and thick. And I like pizza sauce so much that I've been known to eat it with a spoon. And trust me, I have, because tasting is a huge and important part of cooking, especially on live Facebook pages. But um, it's really super delicious. And I will prove that to you by taking a... Mm. It's very parmesan -y. I love Parmesan cheese. This pizza sauce is amazing, and I could eat the whole thing here, but I won't. <laughs> so at any rate, I know that we're not gonna have time to be able to see the fruit of our labor, but when the, the cups come out, we are going to spoon this mixture, just a little bit, just like a tablespoon, into each cup, and then you are going to divide a half a cup of shredded parm or shredded mozzarella cheese and then whatever other toppings you want. Um, one of the things that I love to use is turkey pepperoni. I keep this in my freezer at all times um, in desperation mode. It makes good dog treats too, but we won't even go there. <laughs> the dog is looking. So I put like three or four of them on each little cup. I take a little bit of green pepper and red onion is my favorite and sprinkle that on each cup. The rules are there are no rules. You can put whatever you want. You could put black olives, green olives, jalapenos. You could put your onions and your peppers. Um, you could even make this, you could even put ground beef, ham, pineapple. You can do whatever you want to do. Marsha, are you saying it's snowing at my house? It's flurries. But yeah, we got a lot of snow. <laughs> at any rate, so any of the toppings are yours to do as you please. The nutrition facts that I have on this recipe just include the turkey pepperoni and the nutrition facts you're gonna be thrilled about, okay? Because each cup, each spaghetti squash pizza cup <coughs> is only delivering 95 calories, four grams of fat, eight carbs, and 12 grams of protein. It's amazing, okay? So hold on, I'm gonna step away just for a second. I've got the finished product that I want to show you in just a second. I wanna make sure that if you have any questions that you ask them in the message feed. Um, 
I also want to show you one of the things that I also do with the spaghetti sauce or the pizza sauce is I sprinkle it with a little pizza seasoning. This is my favorite seasoning and you're going to see this on our Bariatrics and Tips Facebook page a little bit more today because I love it so much. Again, you can get it locally. You can also get it online. It just brings a zest to everything and I love it so much. It gives it a nice little bite to it and makes it taste very like restaurant pizza-ish. So that is also in here as well. Um, I think I've showed you everything. Let me get the spaghetti squash and then I'll have showed you everything, okay? Here we come. So these pizza cups came out great. I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see it perfectly. Hold on. Here we go, we're getting there. There, all right. Behold, the spaghetti squash pizza cups. Look how they have kept their shape. Thank you to the egg, the incredible edible egg, okay? My, oh, and there's the dog. I suspect that Amazon is delivering something. If I break it open, you've got this yummy spaghetti squash goodness that is just amazing. The dog, I'll tell you. Doesn't that look great? Okay, I'm putting half of this in my mouth right now. Um, you guys, I have news for you. It is amazing. If I do say so myself, and I do quite often. <laughs> I love it. These are amazing. It's a great recipe. It's super portable. You can take them for work. You can take them in the car. You can keep them in the fridge when you want. But look how they, how they retain their shape so nicely. They're amazing. And then you can just take some parsley, Italian parsley, and um, put it on top for color. So that is our recipe demonstration for today. It is a great vegetable type, vegetable based recipe. You can make this completely plant based too. I can't talk today. Plant based too. And you can use um, vegetarian crumbles, um, sausage crumbles instead of the turkey pepperoni. Um, you can use regular pepperoni, ground beef, like I said, ham. You can do anything you want. That's the beauty of these recipes is that I'm showing you what works for me and what I love, but in reality, you can make this your own by tweaking it to fit your palate, okay? And flavor, spices and veggies and sauces, that flavor concept, that's gonna take you far from feeling deprived. And that is the main thing. You do not wanna feel deprived because that's when we tend to lose control. So thank you for watching. Please remember that Bariatrics and Tips is on all social media, um, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Next week, I'm going to bring you my absolute, absolute favorite chicken tortilla soup. You are going to love it. It is a protein powerhouse. It could be made plant-based. Um, well, it could be made plant-based if you didn't use the chicken, then it would just be called tortilla soup. But you can make this as hearty as you want, and I can't wait to show it to you, okay? Remember, you're going to have recipes starting today at 3 o'clock. If you need anything, please let me know. I so appreciate you watching today. Happy New Year. Healthy New Year. This is the year of us, okay? We are worth it. We are so worth it. Enjoy your day, okay? Have a good one. Bye.